G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at some of the biggest trade bombshell stories that I can recall. This video is kind of inspired by me sort of making the observation this year kind of lacks big headline trades, or at least it does so far. I've been going through the recent trade periods in a little series you might have seen on the channel and going through some of the most high profile trades over the last few years. And it's obvious that this year, the biggest name that's probably gonna be moving is Adam Chera or Jordan Dawson, depending on how you rate those two players. Adam Chair is probably going to be the most expensive trade as things currently sit. So I thought it would be a fun exercise to go through the last decade or so and trawl through what are the, some of the biggest trade bombshell stories that we can recall. So I've got a list of eight here and in no particular order, I'm just going to rattle through them, going through some of the biggest stories that I can recall since I've been following football. So the first one we'll start off with is one particularly close to the heart for me, Chris Judd, who departed the West Coast Eagles in 2007 to join Carlton. Judd was the premiership captain of the Eagles just one year prior and was a recent Brownlow medalist and considered by many to still be the best player in the game. And despite a strong 2007 season, which saw the Eagles finish third, Judd requested a trade home back to Victoria. Now the Eagles obviously were going through a lot of off-field drama at the time, and this was arguably a factor in Judd wanting out, but I think it was generally well reported that he was always going to be heading home to Victoria just to be at home. So Judd made his way to the Carlton Footy Club along with pick 46, which became Dennis Armfield for Josh Kennedy pick three, which became Chris Maston, and pick 20, which became Tony Knott. With Ben Cousins sacked shortly after that, the Eagles would plummet into both on-field and off-field turmoil and crash into the bottom two the following year. Although on the flip side of that, you could argue that this trade was a pretty key piece in engineering the eventual 2018 premiership as both Josh Kennedy and Chris Maston formed a part of that team. Kennedy in particular was a very key part of it. Judd, on the other hand, continued his elite form at the Blues for another eight seasons. He won another Brownlow in 2010, but the Blues just couldn't quite build a strong enough list around him to raise higher than fifth on the AFL ladder. The second big trade bombshell, technically not a trade, but I'm going to mention Gary Ablett Jr., who left the Geelong Footy Club to join the Gold Coast Suns at the end of 2010. Ablett was probably the best player in the game at the time, in a champion side, and obviously the son of a club legend in Gary Ablett Sr. There was rumours of him joining the new Gold Coast expansion side throughout the whole season, but at the end of that season where he finished running up in the Brownlow medal, Ablett signed a five-year deal with the new franchise. The contract he was offered was reportedly $9 million over five years, which comfortably made him the best paid AFL player of all time. Ablett continued his brilliance at the Suns. Like Judd, he won another Brownlow medal at his second club in the 2013 season. Although it's fair to conclude that the Gold Coast Suns obviously really struggled throughout that entire period, even when he was playing well. From this sort of unprecedented free agency move, Geelong were awarded a first round compensation pick which they took Billy Smets with, and unfortunately he didn't really get it together for the Cats, playing 38 games before requesting a trade to Carlton. Geelong coped just fine without Ablett, funnily enough. They won the flag in the first year without him, as well as Bomber Thompson not being the coach. That was Chris Scott's first year at the club. But ultimately, it would lead to a happy reunion in the end, with Ablett rejoining the club at the end of the 2017 season and playing in the 2020 Grand Final. The next big trade story I want to highlight is Patrick Dangerfield. He was, of course, drafted from the Adelaide Crows, with pick 10 in 2007 as an underager and he eventually requested a trade to the Geelong Footy Club when he first became a free agent. As I said, Danger was an underager at pick 10 and obviously took a little while to get going, but it was clear from the outset that he had the tools to become a fully elite AFL player. It would be 2015, the year where Dangerfield would fully arrive as that elite player, winning his club's best and fairest after a breakout season. Unfortunately for the Crows, this would coincide with the year that Dangerfield first qualified as a restricted free agent agent here exercised these rights and signaled an intention to join Geelong. Given he was a restricted free agent, the Crows were able to match this offer and force a trade to maximize their compensation and then receive Dean Gore, pick nine and pick 28 in the draft that year. In addition to Gore, they drafted Wayne Miller with pick 11 and used 28 in a deal to acquire Carlton's Troy Menzel. Gore and Menzel are no longer on the list and Miller is a handy footballer, but didn't really quite compensate for the form that Dangerfield was about to show. He won the Brownlow medal in his first season at the Geelong Footy Club in 2016, and he's been a pivotal player for the Cats as they contend for a premiership. I know Dangerfield gets a bad rap, but he's undoubtedly been one of the best players in his generation and for sure would be sorely missed by the Adelaide footy club. The next trade bombshell I want to highlight is Sam Mitchell from the Hawthorne Footy Club who joined West Coast Eagles for the 2017 season. This one's a big bombshell largely because it was just such a surprise at the time and from memory we found out about this deal just 
a day or two before it was actually finalized. Sam Mitchell's obviously an all-time Hawthorne great. He played 307 games for that club. He won four premierships there and a Brownlow medal. Having gone out in straight sets of the finals in 2016, Hawthorne were clearly at the end of their premiership cycle and undoubtedly were looking to free up a bit of salary cap space. Sam Mitchell had been in discussions with the Eagles about joining as an assistant coach once his playing career was completed. And given the fact that he was contracted for the 2017 season to Hawthorne, the Eagles never really contemplated that they could get him as a player. But reportedly, Alistair Clarkson tapped him on the shoulder and said that they could make that happen. And shockingly, Sam Mitchell requested a trade to join the West Coast Eagles. The Eagles senior coach in Adam Simpson would have been a large factor in this as he was an assistant coach at the Hawks between 2010 and 2013 and obviously had an existing relationship with both Clarko and Sam Mitchell. He would play just one season at West Coast in that 2017 year before signing as the midfield assistant coach once he retired at the end of that season. Both of these clubs saw benefit from this particular trade. It allowed the Hawks to free up some salary cap to acquire some of their other established trade targets and the Eagles were able to get Sam Mitchell as an equality assistant coach and a lot of people give him a lot of credit for his influence over the 2018 Premiership midfield. Keeping on the Hawthorne theme, let's talk about Lance Franklin. Like Sam Mitchell, Lance Franklin is a Hawthorne great and unlike Mitchell, this was more against the wishes of Hawthorne when he joined the Sydney Swans at the end of 2013. He won two premierships at the Hawks. He was a four-time All-Australian, a two-time Coleman medalist at this point, a six-time leading Hawks goal kicker and was best and fairest in their flag year in 2008. Before the start of the 2013 season, which was the final year of Franklin's contract with the Hawthorne Footy Club, he announced publicly that he wasn't going to make a decision on his future until the end of the season. Now, like Pat Dangerfield, Lance Franklin, having played eight seasons for Hawthorne, qualified as a restricted free agent, which gave Hawthorne the right to match any bid from rival teams for his services. Now, early on, it appeared that GWS was the most likely destination if Franklin was to leave Hawthorne, given that Franklin had a certain pull to the city of Sydney. But on the 1st of October of that, that year, after months of speculation, GWS shocked everyone by pulling out of the race for Lance Franklin and suggesting that the club was of the belief that Franklin was about to join the Sydney Swans. The Swans chairman, Andrew Ireland, also came out and suggested that Franklin was being offered a nine-year, $10 million deal to join the Swans and that Franklin's management had first approached Sydney about the move 12 months previous, shortly after the 2012 Grand Final. Now, as it would turn out, the Hawks would go on to win the next two premierships. Ironically, one of those flags was against the Sydney Swans in the Grand Final. And while Franklin has definitely been great for the Swans, he's won four more all Australians and played in two grand finals, the Swans unfortunately have not been able to claim a premiership with him on their list. Now I wouldn't go as far as to suggest that Sydney would regret this deal by any stretch, but it's fair to suggest that the Hawks got on very well without Lance Franklin. Next we'll talk about a bit of a double bombshell between Ryan Griffin who left the Western Bulldogs to join GWS and Tom Boyd going back the other way in the same deal. Ryan Griffin at the time was one of the best players at the Western Bulldogs in 2014 when he requested a trade to the GWS footy club and this was particularly jarring considering Griffin was the captain at the time. He requested that trade to the GWS Giants and given that he was an All-Australian just the year previous, this trade was not going to come cheaply. Almost equally surprising, the number one draft pick from that previous year, Tom Boyd, was involved in the deal to join the Dogs despite just having 12 months in the system, a move which was largely unprecedented. Griffin, along with pick six who became Caleb Marchbank, joined the Giants in exchange for Tom Boyd outright. Now this would prove to be a deal that Ryan Griffin would like likely regret given that incoming coach Luke Beveridge came in, took the Dogs to fifth in his first season and took him to the Premiership in his second. Tom Boyd would be one of a handful of heroes for the Western Bulldogs that day, immediately validating the trade from the Dogs' perspective. Griffin, on the other hand, would manage just 55 more games for the Giants before retiring at the end of the 2018 season, missing out on his club's 2019 Grand Final run. The next trade request bombshell would have to be Lockie Neal, who was a consistently gunner footballer for Fremantle, winning his second best and fairest for the club in 2018 despite playing alongside a player like Nat Fife. In a move that pretty much shocked the AFL world, Neil would end the season with a trade request not home to his native South Australia, but to the upcoming Brisbane Lions. And you have to say his move to the Lions has largely been a successful one given that they've qualified for the top four in each of the three seasons he's been at the club and made top two twice. In addition to that, Neil completed his ascension to being a truly elite AFL midfielder, winning the 2020 Brownlow medal. From the Dockers perspective, they flipped the compensation they got from the Neil deal into forwards like Jesse Hogan and Rory Lobb, 
neither of whom have come on like Fremantle would have hoped. This story may still have a bit of a twist in the tale to come because rumours about Lockie Neal returning to Fremantle in the future refuse to die away. The final and most recent big trade bombshell request would be Adam Trelaw just 12 months ago when he left the Collingwood Footy Club to join the Western Bulldogs. Now you should remember that Adam Trelaw appeared to be a key midfielder for the Pies during a relatively successful period over 2018 and 2019 as they contended for premierships and he himself was a high profile trade from the Giants to the Pies five years ago on a six year deal worth plenty of money. He was passionate about playing for Collingwood and from the outside looking in he appeared to be a required player at the Pies as they sought to keep contending. As the 2020 season would draw to a close rumours began to circulate that Trelaw was going to be seeking a trade to the state of Queensland after his partner signed a one year deal to play netball with the Queensland Firebirds and temporarily relocate to Brisbane. It emerged that it was in fact Collingwood that was seeking to move on to law and his remaining five-year contract, citing both salary cap concerns and also concerns over Trelaw's well-being being that far away from his family. However, Trelaw remained pretty steadfast in his own desire to stay in Victoria. After some jarring discussions, it was allegedly made clear to Trelaw that he was not wanted by the Pies and thus he would soon seek a trade to the Western Bulldogs. Trelaw was traded from Collingwood to the Western Bulldogs in November in the final minute of that trade period as Collingwood would receive picks 14 and a future second round pick while the Bulldogs received Trelaw and picks 26, 33 and 42. The Pies plummeted to the bottom two in the 2021 season while Trelaw and the Bulldogs made it all the way to the grand final. Given his age and obviously the desire to play in some successful teams, this seems to have worked out fairly well for Trelaw and it remains to be seen whether this aggressive shedding from the Pies will work out for them long term. Anyway guys, that is my eight nominations for AFL trade request bombshell stories that I can remember. If I've left some out, let me know in the comments what's one that you particularly remember. As always guys, hope you're enjoying this trade content. Already looking forward to the start of the season, but we've still got so much of this trade stuff to go through first. And of course the draft, which I'm equally excited about. So hope to have you along for the journey as well. Hope you're all doing well and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.